known as a major league baseball pitcher. Throughout his major league career, he pitched for, pitched for the Pittsburgh Pirates and earned the coveted Cy Young Memorial Award in 1960 as the major league's most valuable pitcher. Among other awards are the Bob Bachman Comeback Award from the St. Louis Sports Writers, the Babe Dirkerson Memorial Award, Lou Gehring Memorial Award, and Comeback Player of the Year Award by the Associated Press, United Press International, and Sports News. During the presentation of one of his many awards, it was said, not only is law magnificent in his chosen field of endeavor, but one who is also a living symbol of all that is good and clean in the troubled world. No athlete, be athlete better amplifies the kind of man every youngster would aspire to be. Vernon Law is active in the church and a fellowship of Christian athletics. He has five sons and a daughter, and uh, I'd like him to come up at this time and speak if he would. <laughs> Give him a big hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored and pleased, of course, to attend your graduating breakfast. First of all, I would like to congratulate those who are uh, leaving the school. I hope not permanently. I hope you had take the time to come back once in a while and visit and uh, to thank those who have given their time and talents to in helping you to develop yours. I know that that you have reached a milestone, one that I'm sure that all of you are very proud of, and uh, indeed you have every right to be proud of this, but uh, you really you're right at third base now. Uh, you've got to score yet. You've got to find a way to, to get to home. And there's many ways, of course, many, uh, many avenues that, uh, that you can take to, to get there. I know in the sports world, uh, uh, as far as baseball is concerned, uh, it's been my life. I've uh, had 22 years of professional experience. And I want you to know that, that uh, it's not always been easy for me. It, it mentioned that I had received the Bob Bowman Comeback Player of the Year Award. Uh, I think if you're going to be successful in anything, you've got to have that stick to itiveness. You've got to have that desire and willing to pay the price if you're going to gain success in life or in your particular profession. And I had serious arm problems. Uh, matter of fact, I was counted out. People said that I was through. And, uh, you know, that, that's all a person needs once in a while is to tell you to come up to you and say, well, you, you can't do it. You know, you're over the hill. And believe me, that just gives you enough desire and effort to, to fight your way back. I know that uh, with this, most pitchers don't recover after a serious arm injury. But... Uh, through the determination that I had and the faith in myself and the ability that I had, I knew that one of these days I was going to pick up the ball and that arm was going to be okay and I could go ahead and do my job. Now, I know that many of you are going to be faced with same and similar problems in your life as you uh, take on this new profession. You're going to have setbacks, you're going to have problems coming to your life, and I think it's, it depends on, on you. You're your own architects, and what you make of your life and what you'll do with it is strictly up to you. Uh, of course, those here at the school have been instrumental in providing you the opportunities and the, uh, you know, to learn skills and talents, gain talents, and, but it's really up to you what you make of your life. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit this morning about fear of failure. You know, I think this is a, a problem that, that many of us have to overcome in the course of our, our lives. And uh, as an athlete, I don't think there's been anyone that has faced failure as many times as I have. But I never had a fear of failure. I was associated with it many times. Uh, uh, it was a constant companion of mine. But yet I, I don't think that I had the philosophy of, well, you know, pull up a chair and sit down and get comfortable. Uh, I tried to overcome this uh, character, this fear of failure, failure character, as, as uh, I knew how I could. And I, I had confidence that I could. But I think one reason why sports is so important in the lives of, of individuals and participants is that it helps you to cope with success and also with failure. Uh, True, we, it does defeat us once in a while, 
but I think because uh, of our going out each contest, we, we gain new experiences, we in, uh, have great and many successes in our lives, we know what it is to wear the, the victor's crown, and so we face each contest with new enthusiasm, with new courage and determination. Now, <clears throat> you know, I once saw a prize fight in which the, the champion was, uh, naturally he was a favorite, and he was a killer type of a boxer. And his opponent, he, well, he had him knocked down and around a ring, uh, oh, many, many rounds. And it was just uh, luckily that the bell saved him many, many times. But uh, even with all the punishment that this uh, underdog was taking uh, and absorbing, he, ha he had sensed somehow that he had destroyed the confidence of this champion. Uh, just because he wouldn't go down. And he knew that if uh, he persisted that the battle would change. At least he, he felt of this. And he, uh, even though that uh, this killer had knocked him down many, many times and he kept getting up and coming back, why, uh, he really felt like, you know, the tide of the battle was going to change. And so, in desperation, this fighter began throwing lefts and rights and... Uh, it wasn't long until the overwhelming favorite, the, the champion, was flat on his back out cold. Well, even though the underdog, as he stood over him, was a gory mess, <clears throat> uh, he knew that he won the fight because of his stick to He had this, this spirit within him that, that just wouldn't give up. And I think that that's what the kind of spirit that that uh, each of us need to have and develop in our lives, particularly uh, in the sports world. And I, of course, I can, this is the only area that I can speak in because this has been my life. And I know that some of your, your teachers here can talk in other areas, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, the sports world teaches us many lessons. We can gain a great deal from the sports world. Now, <clears throat> there is one other quality that I think that all of us need to possess and to obtain if we're going to uh, enjoy success in this life. And that, I think this quality is sometimes even more important than, uh, well, all the knowledge and, uh, uh, that we can attain in our particular professions. And that, of course, is this, this stick to that I that I mentioned, this desire, the ability to uh, to face problems uh, and ser uh, really serious problems. We've got to have the self-confidence and the persistence to uh, work out problems, even though sometimes uh, they seem insurmountable. Sometimes, you know, we have to fail again and again before we really find out what we're cut out to do. Uh, I know that many of you have known people in your lives who have failed uh, many, many times, yet they've, they've built a life of success uh, around failure. Uh, I think if we took our, our present, uh, President of the United States, Pres President Nixon, he, he was one who, who faced defeat many, many times, yet he is the President of the United States today because he had to stick to it even this. You know, once in a while, uh, we throw ourselves into neutral. And I think this is important. Now, we do this occasionally, but uh, certainly not while we're trying to achieve our objective. Often, an individual starts a project, and uh, with great enthusiasm, he gets a running start on the field only to, you know, to throw himself in neutral and sit back and relax and in, enjoy the success that he's had. And, and uh, this really can be a mistake. I think we often ought to remind ourselves of this famous fable of the tortoise and the hare. Uh, I've seen many athletes develop this kind of an attitude. Many pitchers who have gone out uh, started great, uh, had a ten, 10 wins and two losses or one loss uh, in the first two months of the season. And so they, you know, they really get to feeling like, well, they've got it made, you know, and so they sit back and think all they have to do is just go ahead and throw the glove out there on the mound and they're an instant winner. Well, uh, and of course, when the year end comes around, why they're 12 and 10 or something like this. And it's, uh, 
it's really too bad that people do have this kind of an attitude, but they, they will do this occasionally. And I know, I know that in, in baseball I've seen it happen many, many times. It's been, baseball has been uh, uh, a great profession for me because I've enjoyed uh, doing things with my hands. Uh, I was never one to uh, enjoy, you know, the, the theory type of an education, uh, uh, a white collar job, uh, even though these are nice. Uh, some of us are just not cut out to, the, to do this kind of work. Uh, I took a course in, uh, uh, in a vocation, uh, vocational course there in Boise Junior College, one in which uh, I enjoy very much. Uh, I enjoy doing things with my hand. Uh, it was a course in carpentry work, in cabinet making, and this type of thing. And, and to this day, it's been of great help to me and it's something that I've really enjoyed. But uh, when the opportunity came around to play baseball, well, I, I jumped at it because, as I said, I was not one to, uh, well, grades and subject matter just wasn't my long suit. I really had to work hard to get good grades uh, in, order to play, in order to play the different sports. And uh, this was my motivation. Sports was my motivator. And I, uh, the only reason I made good grades is because of sports. But when this opportunity came to me to play ball, I, I jumped at it. But now that I have been down at the university for a couple years, I can see what I've missed out on. About the only college that I graduated from was uh, the College of Hard Knocks. And uh, sometimes this is not uh, the best thing in life, but sometimes it is, uh, uh, can be most helpful to an individual to learn from experience. And as I said, now that I've been down at the university for a while, I can see some of the, the things that I have missed out on. As I look at some of these great kids that we're associated with and working with there, uh, I really admire and respect them. And as I look at them, I can, I can see that, uh, a great future in front of them. And whereas in my case, had I broken a leg or gotten a sore arm early in my career, I, I just don't know what would have happened to me. And so, even though you're graduating today, uh, which is a great moment in your lives, still don't be content, don't be satisfied and sit back and, and think that you've got it made because you certainly have the, ch the challenge is right, still right in front of you. And it's important that you continue your education. Don't stop here. Like I said, I, I really feel that you're just at third base right now. And so if you can, Take advantage of the opportunities that lie ahead of you at the present time, and I think that, that you will, uh, you'll be a 20-game winner, that you'll be a Sandy Koufax or uh, a Bob Gibson or someone like this. Uh, there's just unlimited uh, knowledge that, that each of us can obtain in this life, and even though you feel like you haven't made, uh, I'd like to give you some advice that, that I received. Uh, uh, several years ago when I was still playing by my pitching coach, Bill Burwell. Bill had been in the game 45 years. You know, and uh, when you're involved in a business that long, you think, well, you must know everything there is to know about the game of baseball. But he made the comment to me, he says, Vern, he says, that even though I have been in the game 45 years, I just now am beginning to understand and, and think I know just a little bit about baseball. You know, many of us feel that all you have to do to play the game is to get a ball, a bat, and a glove and go out and play. But there are so many things involved in the game of baseball, and I'm sure that this is true in every profession, that uh, you have to, you know, just continue on and uh, each year trying to understand uh, and looking around and obtaining knowledge and, and uh, experience along with it before you really begin to understand all, everything there is to know about the game. Now, I've, I mentioned I have been in professional baseball 22 years, but I really don't think that I know everything there is to know about pitching or about playing the game. There are so many things that I don't know, even though that I have tried to apply myself the best I could to the game in obtaining knowledge and understanding and skills that... that uh, uh, you know, that you would think that all it would be, just be necessary, you'd be, you know, an encyclopedia as far as the, the game of baseball is concerned, but you just don't learn it overnight. 
and it takes a lifetime to gain this kind of an experience and this, these kinds of knowledges. Now, <clears throat> could I also tell you of a couple experiences that, that indicate uh, some of the things that I've been talking about as far as sitting back and relaxing, thinking you've got it made. You know, baseball can be quite cruel to an individual. It's a profession that, uh, that you really don't uh, know from one day to the next where you're going to be playing. Uh, they trade and sell you like, uh, uh, well, like your livestock. Uh, but still, it's, it's probably one of the greatest games that, that's ever been invented. The uh, security is unlimited. If you have ability and a talent, there's just no end to the kinds of money that you can make, as I'm sure you're aware of. I was never a, a 50,000 or 100,000 ball player like so many of them are today. Of course, they wasn't giving money away when I was playing like they are today, but uh, you take a Stan Musial and a, a, a Hank Aaron, a Willie Mays, these, these people are superstars and certainly deserve and command a very high salary, but uh, when you get a shortstop that's hitting 240, making $80,000 a year, uh, you begin questioning some of the owners as to the, uh, you know, what's going on, and do people really deserve that kind of treatment? Well, like I say, there is a lot of security in in uh, the game of, of baseball and other sports as well, but uh, the experience that I had in in uh, this happened back in 19. Uh, 58, when I was uh, pitching against the, uh, well then, the Milwaukee Braves, now the Atlanta Braves, I had, I had got involved in a ball game starting at 8 o'clock and at 12.59 I was still pitching. This, uh, this ball game had gone on for a little over four hours and uh, the score was still tied 2-2 two to two in the 18th inning and I was still pitching. Uh, during those 18 innings, I had given up nine hits. I'd, I'd struck out 12. I'd walked two and given up two runs. And uh, my manager had tried to take me out the 12th inning for a pinch hitter, and I talked him into letting me stay in a little bit longer. And again, in the 15th inning, he tried to take me out. And I, I says, well, Skip, gee, you know, I, here I've pitched 15 innings. Uh, I deserve either to win or lose it, don't you think? And... Uh, and he agreed, so he let me stay in another couple innings. Uh, but when we got to the 18th inning, he says, Vern, he says, I've got to take you out. He says, uh, if you ruin your arm, they're going to run me out of town. Well, I says, okay, Skip, you're running the show. And so I went out with the score tied. And in our half of the 18th inning, we didn't score. Well, uh, Bob Friend, my relief pitcher, comes in and pitches the 19th inning and gives up a run, and we're losing 3-2. to two. Well, in our half of the 19th inning, we come back and score two runs, and we beat them 4-3. to three. And you know who got the victory? Well, Bob Friend got the victory, of course. I didn't even get credit for a complete game when actually I had pitched two. And... Uh, like I say, baseball can be cruel, you know, and, and, uh, but it does have it, its very rewarding moments. I've enjoyed some great thrills in baseball, and like I say, I've learned many lessons. I think I, I've learned how to get along with people. I've uh, been associated with all kinds of people. Uh, there's never been any problems as far as my relationship with others are, are concerned, and speaking particularly of the, the colored situation, I've... I think over the years that, that I've been able to uh, gain the respect and admiration of, of the boys that I played with, black and white. And so uh, baseball has been a great learning experience for me. But I know that in, in your lives, uh, perhaps you have, you've had great learning experiences as well. But I think that by really trying to understand other people and their problems, I think we become very sympathetic. And I know that this, it seems as though the, and I was discussing this with the president here, that the schools, the tech schools, have an image problem. And I think it's up to people like yourself to overcome 
and to improve the image of these kinds of schools because we, there is a great need for people like you and me in this world today who are not afraid to get out and do a, a day's, uh, uh, put in a good hard eight hours of work for a good eight hours of pay. And like I say, that without, without you, I don't know what this country would, well, we'd be in very serious, uh, we'd have a lot of serious problems, I'm sure, without you. And so there is a great need for these kinds of schools all over the country. Now, you know, there, I'd like to relate just a couple other experiences, too, that, that uh, as far as these athletes are concerned. You know, the great athletes of yesterday did not become great just through dreaming about it. Their, their greatness was compounded of sweat and pain, all manner of setbacks and disappointments, physical and mental problems, and also numerous defeats before they finally uh, fought their way through to make themselves victors. Now, we as athletes, uh, those who have reached the top in their profession, who have stood at the summit supreme in their profession, know that they've got there through sacrifice and through effort. And they're certainly not sorry for the price that they had to pay. Uh, I can remember as a young man when I was still playing uh, minor league baseball. I'd only spent about two years in the minor leagues, but, but I knew that if I paid the price, that if I ran that extra mile, if uh, I did the, those extra things, that one day I'd be playing baseball in the big leagues. And this was my dream, to play ball in the big leagues. But I knew that I, have, I, and I had to pay the effort and the price if I was going to get there. Now, it wasn't but just a, a year later that I was called up. And even though I felt very unprepared at the time to step out on the mound in front of 70,000 screaming, hollering people and try to throw a ball over home plate, uh, you just don't know the feelings that I had. I felt very insecure and very insignificant, and perhaps some of you will have those same kinds of feelings. But uh, it's, it's how you perform is to, uh, well, if you're going to gain the admiration and respect of people, you've got to have that, that determination within you to make success, uh, make, you know, successful experiences, winning, winning efforts every time you go out there. Uh, the conquerors of the world in sports or in any life has, has had to make the, the very best with what uh, has happened to them. Uh, like I say, I've had many losing efforts. Uh, I've played on some very poor ball clubs. Matter of fact, when I joined the Pirates back in 1950, we, I joined a team that, that couldn't play catch without dropping the ball. And I knew that if I was going to win a ball game, I had to shut the other team out and hit a home run. I mean, that's how bad we was. <laughs> Matter of fact, our, our radio and TV announcer, Bob Prince, said, and, and I really thought this was true, that we couldn't make a, a run in a silk stocking with a hacksaw. Uh, we, was, we was really that bad. So, but I've had some great experiences uh, uh, over the years, and it wasn't till a few years later that we uh, began to uh, develop into a good ball club where we gained respect from the other teams that we played against. And... Uh, uh, even though those days were, were awful long, those first years, they became very rewarding because the guys did have this stick to itiveness. They, they did have the desire and the will to be uh, champions. And of course, in 1960 was the year that, that uh, was the climax for all of us who, as young men, dreamed of playing in a World Series. This was the year that we played against the Yankees. And it was, we was fortunate enough to beat them in seven games to uh, be declared the, the champions of the world. And so it made all of the, the days that I spent running, all the sweat and perspiration, all the, the, the defeats and setbacks that I had early in my career, it made them seem very small. And at the same time, as I look back, I can... I can think how important they were in my developing the right kind of an attitude to be successful in this profession. 
It was certainly a, a, a great thrill to, to play against the Yankees because at that time they had, well, they were indestructible. Uh, at least that's what everyone thought because they had a Yogi Berra, they had a Mickey Mantle, a Roger Maris, a Moose Gowan, Bob Serve, and Tony Kubek, and Bobby Richardson, and uh, athletes who were really great, uh, who had great reputations. And believe me, I think the reason why the Yankees had so much success over the years is because of a fellow by the name of Yogi Berra. Berra. You look at him, you can't really uh, determine, you know, as far as their bill is concerned, between uh, Yogi Bear and Yogi Berra, they're almost identical, but <laughs> believe me, they, this, uh, this guy was perhaps one of the greatest athletes that, that ever put on a major league uniform. Yogi, among his hitting ability and uh, his likableness as an individual, he had uh, a reputation of also being able to distract the hitters. And any of you who are pitchers really appreciate a catcher up there that can get that hitter's mind off of what he's trying to accomplish. But Yogi was a real artist at this, and he had several ways that he could distract a hitter. One was uh, uh, he was a great conversationist. You know, you get people talking about something else, they get their minds off of work. I'm sure many of you are golfers. You know what concentration you have to have, you know, in order to even hit that steel ball, let alone a moving one coming in at you at 100 miles an hour. Well, Yogi, uh, you walk up to home plate, he says, Hi, Vern, how you doing? You know, the great Yogi Bear is speaking to me, you know, a, a nobody. Well, you know, I'm flabbergasted. I'm not going to, you know, stick my nose in the air, not pay any attention to him. I, Gee, thanks, Yogi. I'm fine, you know. And uh, and he said, Well, where do you where do you make your winter home? Well, I live out in Idaho, where the hunting and fishing's good, you know. And first thing you know, I got two strikes on me. <laughs> now, <clears throat> now I'm at a great disadvantage, you know. He's because uh, that pitcher, you get two strikes on you, you've got to protect the plate, you know. And anything close, you've got to swing at it or be called out. And so. Uh, you're really at a great advantage when you got someone like a Yogi Bear back catching in a ball game for you. I can remember Hank Aaron is, is all business when he steps up to home plate. He no conversationalist whatsoever. And it was when the Yankees was playing then the, then the New York Yankees for the championship of the world and and Hank Aaron's murdering them with base hits, home runs, doubles, driving in people and and Yogi Bear can't. Uh, he just can't, uh, you know, get uh, Hank Aaron's mind off of his work. And so finally he notices that, that Hank Aaron's bat, the label on the bat, is pointing towards the pitcher, you know, and all of us have grown up with the idea, and, and you know, any time that ball, that label's pointing towards the pitcher, and a ball hits near that area, you're going to break your bat. Well, it's, it's not really true, but it, sometimes it could be. Uh, it all depends. You know, if the green and that bat is going this way, why hitting an object coming in this way, you're not as apt to break it if that green is running this way. And so that's the reason for it. But uh, it doesn't always hold true. Uh, but he didn't notice this, and he says, Hank, he says, you're going to break your bat. That label's pointing right towards the pitcher. Well, Henry, he turns around, he looks down par, calls time, and he steps back, and he says, Yogi, he says, I just come up here to hit, not read. You know. Uh, so Henry was one who, like I say, was not a conversationalist. Uh, he was all business when he steps up there to home plate. And, of course, uh, I've had many experiences of pitching to Hank Aaron. But uh, another thing that Yogi would do is... Uh, uh, when that pitcher winds up and gets ready to cut the ball loose, why, he'll reach down and grab a handful of dirt, you know, and just about the time that ball reaches home plate, why, he, you know, he flicks it over on your feet, you know, and something like that hitting you, it just kind of shakes you up for a minute, you know, but, <laughs> but that's, all, that's all you need, you know, and, and of course, a lot of these things go undetected by the umpires, and uh, so he really did get away with an awful lot, but uh, really the best thing of all now, I don't know if any of you have ever had the opportunity of hearing Yogi Berra sing or not, but you can imagine being in a World Series, stepping up to home plate, and that pitcher out there is throwing the ball at you between 90 to 100 miles an hour, and, and you're concentrating on your job and what you're trying to do, and all of a sudden this guy breaks out and starts singing you a lullaby. 
Well, you can imagine that uh, a yogi, believe me, can't carry a tune in a, a, a garbage pail, let alone a bucket. He's, uh, he's probably the world's worst, and it, uh, it really breaks you up to have play against a guy like that. But I think Yogi was the reason why the Yankees had so much success over the years. Now, uh, of course, they had another fellow that really murdered us, uh, a guy by the name of Bobby Richardson, the smallest Yankee of all, about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, he got 12 base hits, uh, oh, excuse me, he drove in 12 runs, uh, against us that series. Uh, when the Yankees beat us, it was 17 to nothing, uh, 15 to three, uh, you know, those kinds of scores. But when we beat them, it was two to one, five to four. And uh, in the Yankee Stadium, they have out there in, in, in uh, right center what they call a fanogram, you know, and and they put on there so-and-so breaks so-and-so's record, you know, and it, Practically every time a ball was thrown or a ball was hit, why somebody was breaking a record. Uh, even Casey Stingle, their manager, broke a record by most appearances in World Series, you know, for managers. And uh, uh, just like I say, every time uh, someone hit a ball or a ball was thrown or caught, why they someone was breaking a record. N not any Pirates, but all Yankees. <laughs> and so uh, after we had won the World Series. And some of the guys was being interviewed on TV why uh, there was a guy by the name of Hal Smith, no, excuse me, uh, Gino Simoli, a boy from San Francisco. He says, well, the Yankees, they broke all the records, but we won all the money. And this was very true. They, they did. They broke a lot of records in that series. Whitey Ford, uh, uh, Mickey Mantle, uh, even Bobby Richardson was one of, I think at that time, about four people who had hit a grand slam home run. And uh, so they, they did break an awful lot of records, but we was fortunate enough to, to beat the Yankees in seven games to win the, the World Series. But these are, these are some great experiences in, in, uh, in growing up. They're successful experiences. And I know that, that each of you are going to have some of these same kinds of experiences in, in your life. Now, you're going to have problems and setbacks, as, as everybody does, but don't let them defeat you. Uh, don't go around with your head in the sand because we're here to be successful, to be happy and, uh, and live the kind of lives that, uh, that will help, <clears throat> help those not only of yourself but those of your family and those around you to be happy. Uh, of course, you know, it's very easy to, uh, to be happy when everything around you is calm and serene and everything's going your way. I think the test of a true champion is one who's when someone, you know, makes ripples in the water once in a while, when there's a lot of pressure applied to you, how well do you perform? Uh, as a pitcher, let me tell you, when I, within a space of just of a few short years of professional experience in baseball, I find myself in Yankee Stadium. Uh, I'm, I'm on a little ant hill out there, you know, and I've got 70,000 screaming people uh, all around me. They, you, you feel like they're right on top of you. And on top of that, your manager gives you that little white ball and says, Vern, you go out there, you get Yogi Bear, Mickey Mantle, Moose Gar you get them out. You know, well, this is quite an assignment for a boy that was born and raised on a farm uh, who had never seen more than maybe uh, four or five hundred people assembled in one room uh, at church or someplace. Uh, and yet, uh, here you are, you're given that responsibility and that challenge uh, with 70,000 people, plus all of those all over the country watching you on TV. Uh, a pressure? Well, I don't know, you know. Uh, there was an awful lot of pressure there, let me tell you. And so how well do you perform under this kind of pressure? Well, here again, I think it all comes back to these successful experiences that we have had as we're growing up. Now, I don't know how well any of you could, could perform under those kinds of circumstances. If I took you today and put you in that situation, how well could you perform? Well, I, I, I think I know. Uh, 
it's just like me, someone putting me in a, in a tournament with Billy Casper or Jack Nicklaus. Uh, I know how well I could perform. <laughs> There's no question in my mind that uh, I would double bogey every hole and uh, miss six-inch putts and everything else because I, I'm out of my environment. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not comfortable in those kinds of situations. But you put me on a, on a baseball diamond on that little anthill and uh, with 70,000 people and give me that little white baseball, I, I know how I can, uh, I have the confidence and the, the assurance and uh, knowing that I can get the job done. And uh, I'm sure that, that with the type of training that you folks have had here, that you're going to have some very successful experiences. But like I said before, don't, uh, just don't think that you've got it made and don't think that there isn't more to learn because there is. There's an awful more to learn about your profession. Talking again about pressure, in the seventh game of the World Series, we had just lost the sixth game and I know I'm pitching the next day. Uh, I knew that when I left that house that morning that it was dependent on me if we were going to be champions or if we was going to be also rands because pitching is 70 to 80 percent of whether you're going to have a, a winning experience or a losing experience. And so when I left the room that day, I felt like I had the world on my shoulders because I wanted to be and have an ex a successful experience. I wanted to be one of those who wears a World Series ring. Uh, and fortunately, the way things turned out, why, even though I didn't get credit for that win, when I left the ball game in the sixth inning, we had a, uh, a four to two lead. But um, my manager, because I had pitched the whole series on a bad leg, the manager felt that I'd had enough and that perhaps I was losing that little edge that I had, so he took me out. But my relief pitcher, Elroy Face, who perhaps is the greatest relief pitcher in the history of baseball, he couldn't hold the Yankees. Uh, Yogi Berra hit a three-run homer off from him to put them ahead, and then they got a couple more runs off from him before we was able to, uh, to get them out. And then we came back, and, and Hal Smith hit a three-run homer for us to put us back in the lead again. But then the Yankees came back in their half of the, or in the top of the eighth, and they tied the score up again. And then in our half of the ninth, why... Bill Mazeroski, our fine second baseman, hit one out of the park to win it for us 10 to 9. Really a, a great and thrilling experience for all of us. But uh, uh, let me tell you, it was, it was a lot of pressure that day as I look back on it. Um, but here again, it, I think it's a true test and true mark of a champion as to how well you perform under these kinds of circumstances. Now, I don't know if any of you have jobs or will have jobs where you're going to have uh, two or three million people looking down your back, over your shoulder, as to see how well you perform. Uh, I doubt very much whether most of you will have, but, and perhaps you won't have that kind of pressure applied to you and the performance of your duties. But uh, regardless of that, you're going, to, you're going to have to produce under uh, difficult circumstances sometimes, and I know that it that you've received the training here that, that will help you to uh, have some successful experiences along these lines. I think that when you do suffer a setback, a loss or a defeat, don't, uh, don't let it defeat you for life. Uh, certainly be prepared to face it like a champion. And as I said before, I think that's why sports is, has been so important to me because it has, it has helped me to uh, place value where, they sh where it should be placed and to learn to cope with success and with failure. Uh, as an athlete, I did not even consider the cost or the odds against uh, uh, being a, a champion or being a, uh, playing on a championship ball club. We, most all athletes are very willing to pay this price and the cost and to play against the odds of them making it big in the big leagues or making it big in their particular profession. And so I think that they, as I'm sure you are, they go out and they face these challenges with great enthusiasm. And so I, I hope that you are doing the very same. And I'm sure that if you will apply yourself with the, 
with the same persistence, the same determination, the same self-reliance and self-confidence, and with the same patience and spirit that you too will have and win many victories that will mean just as much to you as these athletes have, uh, well, the, the winning experiences they have and, and certainly what they have meant to them. I know that in my particular case, I've had uh, a few great years in the big leagues. I certainly was not a, uh, a Sandy Koufax or a Robin Roberts or a Warren Spawn or a Dizzy Dean or anyone like that. Uh, fortunately, I had a few good years in the big leagues and I've had some great experiences. But uh, at the same time, uh, I was able to develop a, a relationship with other people that I think that really helped me to be successful in my business, and particularly to stay with one ball club my whole career. Uh, I was not a troublemaker. I did not go against uh, their established rules that they had on the club. I, I went the extra mile. I did a lot of public relation work for the ball club. The year of 1960, I think I spent one night at home with my family. Uh, of course, we played a lot of night games, but uh, there were many times that, that I was out on speaking engagements uh, when I could have been home. But uh, if you will do the very same thing, if you will develop the right kinds of attitude, and if you will go the, the extra mile with those with whom will be your employers, and I'm sure that that you too will have a lot of rewarding and very happy experiences. And I, I leave these, these words with you and I hope that, that uh, you all have great, great and successful experiences in your lives and uh, happy ones at that. And thank you very much for inviting me and sharing this morning with you. Again, my congratulations to those of you who are congratulating and I hope that, uh, that you don't stop here, that you will continue on. And, and enjoy uh, and gain new knowledge and experience. Thank you very much.